Hello Cleave Tech Tech Tippers and welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tips video. And if you think that was hard to say, you're right. Today's tech tip was inspired by comments I've had from viewers of my previous videos and they were asking questions such as what hubs would you use on your slot car? Why do you use certain hubs? What difference does size make? Well, size is important, but so is mass and rigidity. And in today's tech tip, you're going to find out why. So on the screen now, you can see a range of hubs and I've labelled them all on the screen so you know what manufacturer of hubs they are. I'm not sure about all of them, but I've given you some idea of perhaps what they're made from as well. Now, these are not an extensive range of hubs. You can get loads more from different manufacturers, etc., all around the world. But these are ones that I have in my box and I've used over the period of my slot racing career. Some are good, some are not so good. But in today's video, I'm going to explain why I might choose one over the other and, in my opinion, what makes a good slot car hub. On that second point, I'm actually filming two videos in one. Because as well as Cleave Tech Tech Tips and Cleave Tech Model Cars, you may have seen those playlists. If you haven't, I'm going to put a link on the screen to my model car one. You're probably watching the Tech Tips one now. But I'm also going to be starting a new playlist called Cleave Tech Reviews. Now that's where I look at products and I try to objectively analyse that product and give you my opinion and my honest review of that slot car product. So I'm actually filming a review of this particular hub today and that'll be coming on my channel very soon. So let's get on with our tech tip. Well I'm going to start off by gathering some information about each of the hubs. So I'm going to weigh each one and I'm going to measure each one. So let's start by weighing them. A few moments later well, some of those results were quite surprising for me. Now, this one here in particular, this magnesium hub, it feels really, really light in my hand. In fact, it actually feels a little bit lighter than some of the others. But actually, when you weigh it, it doesn't come out that light. And I'm surprised by some of these polymer hubs at how light they actually are. I think it's also worth mentioning that none of these hubs actually have any grub screws in them. I've removed all the grub screws and they're just as they come. Next up, we're gonna measure them. So to measure them, I've got my little micrometer set up in my vise. So I can take my hub, and I'm gonna measure the diameter first of all. So I'm gonna measure the diameter on these polymer hubs. I'm gonna measure it where the aluminium boss inside it meets the polymer hub, because if I don't, the micrometer can tend to crush the polymer hub slightly. So I'm going to measure them all and I'm going to get back to you very soon. A little longer than a few minutes later. Now to measure the length on some of these hubs, I actually need to measure two things. I don't know whether you can see if I look at that view there, can you see how a lot of these polymer hubs have a small little boss that sticks out on the back of the hub that sticks out further than the polymer part. So I need to measure the width of the hub and I'm going to measure the extra little bit that sticks out. So in order to do that, again, I'm going to use my micrometer and I'm going to measure the main polymer part. And then I'm also going to measure the overall width of the hub. Now to do that, I'm going to block off one end of the hub with a steel rule. I've measured the steel rule and it's exactly half a millimetre thick so that when I put it into my micrometer and I measure it like that, then I can measure the whole of the width and just minus half a millimetre off. A little longer than a few minutes later. So now that I've weighed and measured them all for stats purposes, so you can see what all the different hubs actually come out at, let's have a look at these two tires, completed tires that I've got in front of me. Very similar diameter, but 
One of them has a nine and a half mil hub. The other one has a 10 and a half mil hub. So there is actually a little difference between the two. Now the clear difference that you can see is there's a lot more rubber or a lot more sidewall of rubber on the one with the smaller hub than there is the one with a bigger hub. Now that affects the handling of your car quite dramatically. And you can really feel the difference on the track by changing hub sizes. And basically there's a millimeter difference there. And you can really feel that on the track. If I squeeze both of them, there's a lot more squash on this one on the left here than there is on the one on the right, because obviously the rubber is softer than the hub. So you get a lot more squash of rubber when you have a smaller hub. And that squash of rubber basically makes a larger contact patch on the track. So you get a slightly more grip from a smaller hub. What it also does is it also makes the car squat down a little bit more at the back when you're cornering. So you do have to be a little bit careful because a car will feel like it's trying to jump out the slot, especially if you've got too much grip, where the back sits down under power and the back will squash down under power and then the front of your car could potentially become slightly lighter. So a smaller hub generally gives you more grip but makes the car tighter and more bitey coming out of corners. A larger hub will give you slightly less grip, but generally gives you slightly more feel over what the car is doing. When the car is going around a corner, you can actually, the car will perhaps move more progressively and slide more progressively with a slightly larger hub because there's less squish of rubber and the car is staying flatter around the corners rather than being squished down on the outside corner and actually twisting the whole chassis a little bit more. So what hub size should you use? Well, pretty much like I've said, a smaller hub generally gives you more grip, but perhaps slightly less feel over what the car is doing. And a larger hub gives you slightly less grip, but gives you more feel over the car and tends to corner flatter. So if you're really, really, really struggling for grip, I would go for a smaller hub. Obviously we're talking about using perhaps comparing the same rubber across all your hubs here. You could obviously change types of rubber and so on, but that's a whole nother video. But for now, if rubber was the same on all of your hubs, a smaller hub generally gives you more grip, a bigger hub slightly less grip. But as I said at the start of my video, size isn't everything. Rigidity is also important. Now compare these two hubs. This is the JK hub and this is the sort of random aluminium hub that I had. Clearly when I squish the aluminium hub it doesn't move. It's thick enough so that it's got no flex at all. I can't move that whatsoever. But if I squish this one can you see how the polymer squishes? Quite a lot. Now depending on the make of hub you can get some that squish obviously a lot more than others you can get different thicknesses of hub. Again, they've got different amounts of squishiness. But basically, the more squishy the hub is, again, the more bite you could potentially get from your tyres. Similar to having more rubber, more sidewall depth on your tyre, a squishier hub tends to give you more grip out of your car. But again, it gives you less feel over the car. In that when the car is cornering, the hub is obviously squashing slightly as you're loading it up. So you get a sort of a springiness on the back of the car as you're coming out of the corner. And that can sometimes give you too much bite out of a corner and mean that the car sort of front ends out of the slot. Whereas a harder hub or a more rigid hub tends to move, the car tends to corner much flatter. It will slide a little bit more, but it corners flatter and is slightly more predictable. So again, these polymer hubs, depending on their flexibility, do give you slightly more grip than perhaps a rigid aluminium hub. But another area where these polymer hubs really score highly over an aluminium hub is in crashes. Now, no matter how good a driver you are, you're always gonna have crashes. Some people have a lot more crashes than others. Some people have little tiny crashes. Some people have big crashes, but ultimately you're gonna be crashing. So if you hit a wall with one of these aluminium hubs, yes, it's much stronger in the first place, so maybe no damage will occur, but if damage does occur, then the aluminium hub tends to become flattened or dented. And then that's 
totally out of balance and it's running totally out of true on your axle and can be a horrible nightmare to carry on driving with and may need replacement. Where these polymer hubs really come into their own is if you do have a big accident against the wall they tend to squish and give slightly and they still spring back and they run pretty true afterwards so they don't actually shatter and break. Although I have had some big accidents where the bosses have been knocked out of the hub and have actually cracked a hub all the way along but that generally only happens if you've hit another car and you've actually taken a chunk out of the edge of the hub and it's actually cracked along the edge of that hub there so that's not very common if you prepare your tires properly and look after your hubs then generally they last quite a long time but a squishier hub gives you more grip but less feel but it also is very good in accidents whereas a rigid hub tends to give you slightly more feel over your car it corners flatter but it can be uh, a bit of a liability in an accident um, and slightly less grip so there's your answers to rigidity and size but remember i said that mass matters as well in this hand here this is the heaviest one that i measured it's the heaviest hub that i measured and this is the lightest hub that i measured now the difference between them is over 0.4 of a gram so we're getting on to half a gram difference between these two so think about the mass of the hub you've got this mass as part of your car anyway so you've got to accelerate and decelerate the mass of two hubs on the back of your car but you've also got to accelerate them rotationally as well and decelerate them rotationally as well so rotating mass really has a big impact on the way the car handles. Now, potentially a really heavy wheel, you could say could act like a flywheel, and then that obviously helps keep the car straight, makes it you know re resist change of direction. But really, the gains of that are probably not as much as the gains you can get from running lighter hubs and lighter wheels for acceleration and deceleration, and making the car perhaps a little bit more nimble and handle a little bit better in respect to cornering. So again, having a lighter hub can also improve your speed of your car. So to answer the question, basically the lighter you can make your tire and hub assembly, the better performing your car is likely to be. It's gonna accelerate better, it's gonna brake better, it's perhaps gonna change direction better and be a little bit more predictable. So on the subject of mass, again, if you looked at the chart of the data of me weighing the mass of these hubs by drilling out this Cohosa 12 mil hub we've actually saved nearly 0.14 of a gram which is actually quite a large amount so you're probably not going to save quite so much on a smaller hub but everything makes a difference well i hope that cleave tech tech tip has helped you a little bit more in order to choose the right hub for the right situation I think this is one of the great things about our hobby or our sport is that there are so many combinations and it's about testing and getting things right and getting the right feel for the for your driving style for the track conditions etc it makes it really really interesting and when you get everything right you get a really fast car and it's absolutely amazing to drive it around the track thank you for watching another Cleve Tech Tech tip and keep your eye out for the review of the Velico hub a brand new Velico hub coming soon on my new playlist Cleve Tech Reviews. See you again soon.